the age of industrialization to see what is industrial revolution industrialization began in the early 19th century it had a profound effect on the social economic and cultural conditions in britain and spread throughout europe and north america and eventually entire world the industrialization process continues to this day industrialization has touched our daily life and influenced our habits and outlook before industrialization many artists came out with imaginary pictures of modern machinery which eventually took shape the spread of railways and factories buildings and bridges the technological development in all fields had a profound impact on people's life before the industrial revolution the period of industrialization before the first factories came up in europe is termed as proto industrialization this period was marked by merchants from town getting products made in villages reasons for focus of merchants on villages they were powerful trade and craft guilds in urban areas these associations controlled competition and prices and prevented entry of a new player in the market because of them it was difficult for new merchants to set business in towns so they turned to the countryside in the countryside poor peasants and artisans began working for merchants cottagers and poor peasants who had earlier depended on common lands for their survival land was becoming scarce in villages small plots of land were not enough to meet the need of a growing population peasants were looking for some additional source of income the proto industrial system was a network of commercial exchanges it was controlled by merchants goods were produced by peasants who worked within their family farms and not in factories the finished product passed through several stages and reached the markets of london from london the products were supplied to the international market proto industrialization that means the period before the beginning of factories in europe now we'll see the coming up of factories in europe the earliest factories in england came up by the 1730s but it was only in the late 18th century that the number of factories multiplied the first symbol of the new era was cotton its production boomed in the late 19th century new machinery was invented for spinning rolling and twisting strong threads were produced due to the modern machinery the cotton mill was created by richard arkwright weaving of cloth done in the cottages by the villagers within the mill all the process were brought together under one roof and management in the early 19th century factories increasingly became an intimate part of the english landscape the first spinning frame by richard arkwright the pace of industrial change cotton and metals were the most dynamic industries in britain during the first phase of industrialization cotton was the leading sector the iron and steel industries grew rapidly with the expansion of railways by 1873 the export of iron and steel from britain was valued at about 77 million pounds this was double the value of cotton export secondly the new industries could not easily displace traditional industries even at the end of 19th century less than 20% of the total workforce was employed in technologically advanced industrial sectors a large portion of the output was produced not within the factories but outside within domestic units and the third reason the cotton or metal industries could not set the change of pace in the traditional industries but the traditional industries experienced many changes which were brought by small and apparently ordinary innovations food processing building pottery glass work tanning furniture making and production of implements were example of such industry now the fourth reason technology changes occurred slowly new technology was expensive and merchants and industrialists were cautious about using it the new machines were not as effective as claimed by the inventors and manufacturers historians acknowledge the fact that the typical worker in the mid 19th century was not a machine operator but a traditional craftsperson and laborer expansion of railways and rail rolling hand labor and steam power 
hand labor was very much in demand though industrialization and machines had set in now let's see the advantages of hand labor in britain there was no shortage of human labor a large number of poor peasants and migrants moved to the cities in search of jobs so industrialists had no problem of labor shortage they did not want to introduce machines that got rid of human labor and required large capital investment in many industries the demand for labor was seasonal gas workers and breweries were especially busy through the cold months and they needed more workers book binders and printers catering to christmas demand too needed extra hands before christmas in all such industries where production fluctuated with the season industrialists usually preferred hand labor employing workers for the season a range of products could be produced only with the hand labor in victorian britain the upper classes called the aristocrats and the bourgeoisie preferred things produced by hand handmade products came to symbolize refinement in class they were better finished individually produced and carefully designed whereas machine made products were for export to the colonies in countries with labor shortage industrialists were keen on using mechanical power so that the need for human labor can be minimized this was the case in 19th century america britain however had no problem hiring human hands life of the workers the excess of labor in the market affected the lives of workers hundreds of rural poor rushed to the cities in search of jobs laborers could find jobs if they had contacts in the city many job seekers had to wait weeks spending nights under bridges or in night shelters some stayed in night refuges that were set up by private individuals whereas others went to casual wards maintained by the poor law authority seasonality of work in many industries after the busy season the poor were on the streets again some returned to the countryside after the winter when the demand for labor in the rural areas opened up in places the life of the workers improved in the early 19th century the workers were again put to a lot of hardship during the napoleonic war unemployment rose dramatically Unemployment induced the workers to rebel against mechanization. Automatic spinning wheels were destroyed in the woolen industry. The situation changed in the 1840s. Building activity increased in the cities. Roads were widened, new railway stations came up, railway lines were extended, tunnels were dug, drainage and sewers laid, and rivers were paved. The number of workers employed in the transport industry doubled in the 1840s and doubled again in the subsequent 30 years. an automatic spinning wheel and an early steam engine the age of indian textiles silk and cotton goods from india dominated the international market in textiles before the age of machine industries fine variety of cotton we produce in india armenian and persian merchants took the goods from punjab to afghanistan eastern persia and central asia bales of fine textiles were carried on camel back through the northwest frontier through mountain passes and across deserts a vibrant sea trade operated through the main pre colonial ports surat on the gujarat coast connected india to the gulf and red sea port masulipatnam on the coromandel coast and hooghly in bengal had trade links with the southeast asian ports indian merchants and bankers We involved in this network of export trade, financing production, carrying goods and supplying exporters. They gave advances to weavers, procured the woven cloth from weaving villages and carried the supply to the ports. Soon, the European companies gained power and by 1750s, the Indian merchants were not dominating the textile market anymore. The English factory at Surat in Gujarat, Hooghly port in Bengal during the 19th century then what happened to the weavers let us find answer to this question the consolidation of east india company power after the 1760s did not initially lead to a decline in textile exports from india british cotton industries had not yet expanded and indian fine textiles were in great demand in europe before establishing political power in bengal and carnatic in the 1760s and 1770s The East India Company had found it difficult to ensure a regular supply of goods for export. The French, Dutch, Portuguese, the local traders competed in the market to secure woven cloth. So the weaver and supply merchants could bargain and try selling the produce to the best buyer. 
This scene changed when the East India Company established political power. The East India Company asserted a monopoly right to trade. The company through its authority was able to ensure regular supplies of cotton and silk. It established direct control over the weavers. The company prevented its weavers from dealing with other buyers by paying them advances. All the members of the family were involved in weaving. Soon, however, in many weaving villages, there were reports of clashes between weavers and gomasthas or paid servants. Earlier supply merchants had very often lived within the weaving villages and had a close relationship with the weavers, looking after their needs and helping them in times of crisis. The new gomasthas were outsiders with no long-term social link with the village. They acted arrogantly, marched into villages with sepoys and peons and punished weavers for delays in supply, often beating and flogging them. The weavers lost the space to bargain for prices and sell to different buyers. The price they received from the company was miserably low and the loans they had accepted tied them to the company. In many places in Karnatik and Bengal, Weavers deserted villages and migrated, setting up looms in other villages where they had some family relation. Weavers, along with the village traders, devoted opposing the company and its officials. Many weavers began refusing loans, closing down their workshops and taking to agricultural labor. By the 19th century, cotton weavers faced a new set of problems. Here we can see a weaver with a modern machinery. Is at work. Manchester comes to India. By the beginning of the 19th century, we see the beginning of a long decline of textile exports from India. Cotton industries developed in England. Industrial groups began worrying about imports from other countries. They pressurized the government to impose import duties on cotton textiles so that Manchester goods could sell in Britain without facing any competition from outside. Soon, the textile manufacturers in England were sold in India through the East India Company. Exports of British cotton goods increased dramatically in the early 19th century. Import of English textiles into India increased from 31% to 50%. Produced by machines at lower cost, the imported cotton goods were so cheap the Indian weavers could not easily compete with them. Indian weavers could not get sufficient supply of raw cotton of good quality. When the American Civil War broke out and cotton supply from the United States were cut off, Britain turned to India for cotton supplies. As raw cotton exports from India increased, the price of raw cotton shot up. Weavers in India were starved of supplies and forced to buy raw cotton at exorbitant prices. In this situation, weaving could not pay. Then by the end of 19th century, weavers and other craftspeople faced yet another problem. Factories in India began production, flooding the market with machine goods. 